truly am grateful for you to tune in and observe the truths that I give from the Word of God. And I personally pray and ask the Lord regularly that something could be said that comes from the Spirit of God, the Word of God, into the hearts of those who listen to these videos and these sermons that will absolutely cause them to have some change in their lives about how they're living, how they should live, and why God wants us to live the way he directs us. I read a statement not long ago, and I want to read it to you. It says, life is not measured by the number of breaths we take, but by the blessings that take our breath away. I like that. That speaks volumes to me. Let me repeat it to you again because I want you to get it. Life is not measured by the number of breaths we take. Life is measured by the blessings that take our breath away. And I want you to know that God has been given many, many blessings that takes our breath away. I'm thinking and have in these last days, especially during the Memorial Day times, of all the different things that God has done in my life for the ministry, for my family, and for me personally, individually, with my relationship with the Lord. And as I thought about that, these thoughts that I'm going to give you today came into my mind and my heart. And they're right out of the Word of God because after I thought about it, I went to the Bible and I came up with these thoughts right from the Word of God that I want to share with you. I want you to get this because most people do not get what I'm about to tell you right now. And that is this. The Bible is very plain and very clear in giving us instruction on what is needed as far as the fear of God. Let me read you something out of Proverbs chapter 1. And you can check me out and open your own Bible and read it for yourself if you would like. But this verse right here struck my heart and my mind. And it's this. Here's what it says. It says in verse 29 of Proverbs chapter 1. For that they hated knowledge. Watch this next statement. And did not choose the fear of the Lord. Now God instructs us to fear him. I'll give you the definition of fear here in just a moment. But fear and to fear the Lord is a choice. They did not choose the fear of the Lord. It's a choice. It's a choice that one must make, but it's a commandment given of God to us to fear him. So we can choose to obey God and fear him, or not to obey him, we can choose and suffer the consequences thereof. Fear the Lord. Now let me give you a definition of what fear is. Actually, there are two definitions for it, but let me give them to you. Fear is a painful emotion or passion excited by an expectation of evil. Now let me say it again because it's so important. I want you to get that part and then I'll, I'll continue the definition. Fear is a painful emotion or passion excited by an expectation of evil or the apprehension of impending danger. And it also has the definition, fear does, of reverence, respect, and due regard. So if we're going to choose to fear like God tells us to here, then that choice is because we know that there's the expectation of a painful uh, thing is going to take place. It may be either by judgment or 
some sorrow or some trial or some heartache or some burden. And we fear those things. And that's a necessity. That's absolutely essential. That we do have those type of fears because those type of things do come into existence. But here's the one I want to dwell on and that's this. The fear of the Lord is to have reverence or to revere God. Reverence God. It's to have respect, and God only knows we need to have the respect for God today. And it's also to have due regard. So all of those are the definitions of fear. So fear is mentioned to us, I don't know, I think I counted at one time 3,374 times in your King James Bible. Now let that sink in for a moment. Why would God emphasize something like that? 3,374 times. Since I want you to hear this message, I'm going to hook up my microphone because I don't want a word missed because I'm going to have the word come right out of the word of God. So let me put this on right here. And then I'm going to speak to you about this matter of fear. Let me define again the fear of the Lord based on what the Bible says. First of all, to be fearful or have the fear of God, to be defined, it is the beginning of knowledge. In other words, a mind, a mental attitude about fear. Let me read it to you. It's in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. Here's what it says. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Now that could easily tell you whether or not you have the fear of the Lord. It is to gain more knowledge about God or to push away that knowledge and not try to uh, accept or learn more, but it is to have, the be, uh, to have the beginning of knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of, of knowledge, of knowing Him, knowing about Him, and knowing what He's trying to do with us and for us. But fools despise this knowledge, this wisdom, and this instruction. That's what it says in your Bible. That's in the Word of God. So it's the beginning of knowledge. Second of all, let me show you this. Proverbs chapter 8, verse, seven, uh, verse 13 says, it's not only the beginning of knowledge, it's the hatred of evil. If you have the fear of God, you're going to hate evil. You're going to hate evil not only in the surrounding areas of, which, of our world and of our country and of our city and of our own personal lives, but we are, if we have the fear of the Lord, it's to hate evil. Hate it. What's going on in this old world as far as sinful uh, conditions are concerned? Hate evil. Listen to what it says. The Bible says in, in, in chapter uh, 8, verse 13 of Proverbs, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the froward mouth. And God says, these do I hate. So the fear of the Lord is to hate what God hates, and God hates evil, pride, and arrogancy, and the evil way. God hates it. Did you know when God looks down upon this earth and sees what's going on, there's a hatred coming from God about no morals, no standards, no righteousness, no holiness? So what is the fear of the Lord? The fear of the Lord is to respect and reverence what He respects and reverence and hate what He hates. When He's against the sin, like the sin of, of adultery, the sin of lying, the sin of homosexuality, the sin of disobedience, all of those things the Bible talks about, God produces hatred toward those things. So what's fear? If I do not have the fear of God by breaking those things that He told me that He hates, then I don't have the fear of God. All right, so number one, 
Fear is the beginning of knowledge. Number two, fear of the Lord then is to hate evil. But here's the third thing in Proverbs chapter 9 and verse number 10. It says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. So, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Now, here's what, here's what wisdom is. Boy, I hope you get a hold of this truth right here. This is absolutely necessary for God's people to understand. And the Bible tells us to pray for wisdom. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who giveth all men liberally and upbraideth not. So wisdom is the key there. But there's a difference between wisdom and knowledge. Knowledge is what we can learn by, from anybody, even by books outside of the Bible, can teach us and give to us knowledge about different things and events of this world. But wisdom has only one source, and that source is God. God's the only one that can instill wisdom in any of us. And so the beginning then of the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. In other words, we get our wisdom on not how, get this, on how to apply the knowledge that we have learned. Whether the knowledge comes from the Bible, or the knowledge comes from experience, or the knowledge comes from life's uh, uh, details of our lives, and, and, or, or, or reading uh, some other books about different things, and geographical areas, and that type of thing. We can gain knowledge, but that knowledge will not do us any good unless we have God's wisdom on how to work out and live out and apply the knowledge that we've learned. So what good is knowledge without the wisdom? Absolutely nothing. Because the wisdom of God will tell you how to apply the wisdom to live a life after Him. Boy, that is awesome. That is awesome. And so I want you to grab this. What is fear? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and it's the holy understanding. Now watch this one. In chapter 14 and verse number 2 of Proverbs, it says this, He that walketh in his uprightness, uprightness feareth the Lord. He that walketh in his, his, God's, his, yours, uprightness feareth the Lord. But he that is perverse in his ways despiseth him. Oh, so then fear of the Lord is walking uprightly. Uprightly means walking righteously. Upwalking means that God is ordering our steps and we're following the steps that he orders. Walking uprightly is God has a way and a path and a journey in which we should go. And we go that way because we're being led in holiness and not being led by the evil and not being knocked off our path and knocked off our way and knocked off our journey by the devil. And so we have to be able to have that fear by walking uprightly. I'll tell you one thing. If you're living in sin and you have a sin that you constantly commit and you're living in that sin and you're not correcting it, you're not, you're not living uprightly. So therefore, if you're not living uprightly, according to the Bible, you don't have the fear of God. And the fear of God is a painful emotion or excited by an expectation of evil. And you can't expect the evil if you do not walk in the wisdom of God and walk uprightly to be able to produce what God had created you to do. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, there's something about this matter of living that most of us are not taking heed to. I'm trying to get you to see something that the, the word fear of God is defined by. It's the beginning of knowledge. It's defined by. It's the hatred of evil. It's defined by. Now get this. It's defined by the beginning of wisdom, getting from God how we ought to live, apply the knowledge. It's defined by walking uprightly. And then listen to this one. Proverbs 15, 33. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. What does that mean? The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. 
we are not only instructed the wisdom from God, but after we have gotten the wisdom of God, now get this, don't miss it, not only are we instructed of the wisdom of God and gotten the wisdom of God, now that we have gotten that wisdom and we can apply our knowledge, we're to instruct others. For example, a parent is to instruct your children, your family members, about the reverence and the respect of God. That's not being happening today. Look at our country. Look at it. Because there's no fear of God, we are living in a in a world of ungodliness and wickedness like I have never dreamed could ever happen to us. Why? Because there's no fear of God. There is not the beginning of knowledge. There is not the hatred of evil. If we hated evil, we couldn't watch some of the things that's on the TV. If we hated evil, we couldn't watch some of the things that's on our iPad. If we hated evil, we could not watch the things that are on, uh, on the different uh, programs that we have. I'm, I'm simply saying there are some things that we ought not to have a part in, whether it be Twitter or Facebook or whatever it is. There are some things we ought not to expose ourselves. The Bible says those things were to hate that are evil. And what do you get on the Facebook and those kind of things? I don't know. I don't have it, by the way. But I understand and I hear because I hear others talk about it. But it, 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 it exposes all of the different things that are evil in other people's lives. In God's name, who wants to know about that? I don't want to know about your evil. I don't want to know about your sin. I don't, know what, I, want, I don't want to know about the, uh, the lifestyle that you live that is opposite of what God's lifestyle for you is. I don't want to know about that. And for me to observe it and to listen to it is not having the fear of God. It's not hating evil. Listen, folks, there's something about this Bible that's true, and it's all true, and that is that the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. It's the beginning of knowledge. It's to hate evil. It's the beginning of wisdom. And all of these things are so absolutely unbelievable that we do not understand what God is trying to produce in us. How about this? The fear of God is to walk uprightly. That's defined. How's your, now come on, look me in my God-given eyeball. Let me ask you a question. Are you living uprightly? Are you living, I'm not asking you, are you a Christian? Of course you're going to agree that you are. And I hope that you are. But what's your lifestyle like? What are you living like? What do you do for your entertainment? What is your natural, normal thought life through the process of a day? What do you do? Do you really, truly gain wisdom and gain knowledge from reading your Bible on a regular basis? Oh my goodness, I mean, not just read it to say I read the Bible, but to read it to achieve and to accept and to be changed by the words of this book. That's the fear of the Lord. To walk uprightly. I can't walk uprightly unless I know how God wants me to walk. He gave me the blueprint. He gave me the pattern. He told me how to walk uprightly. And that's exactly what God expects of all of us. Let's live in the fear of of the Lord by walking uprightly and then of course be able then to influence instruct others now that's the definition of the fear of the Lord now let me give you the the reward of that what happens if we do do these things listen to this I'm going to give it to you you want to be rewarded for your fear Listen to this. It's out of your Bible. It's out of the Word of God. It comes right off the pages, written by the Holy Spirit to indwell in your heart. And you can read it with your own eyes. But here's what it says in Proverbs chapter 10, verse number 27. Listen to what it says. It says in Proverbs 10, 27, The fear of the Lord prolongeth the days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. Oh, you mean if I have the fear of the Lord, 
I have the beginning of knowledge, the hatred of evil, the beginning of wisdom. I walk uprightly and I have instruction of the wisdom. Then I have the fear of the Lord and that's going to prolong my days. That's two things. Number one, you not only have longer days to live, but number two, the days that you live every day, it'll be prolonged with God's blessing. Wow! How about that? Every day that I get up in the morning, that day for the 24 hours, God will prolong those days with His goodness, with His blessings, with His uh, presence, with His power, I am, and not only that, but I can do that for my whole life, and my whole life could have long days. I could live longer. I'm 83 now. I don't know how long God... 83 is prolonged. I mean, I've already lived a prolonged life. I'm simply saying, God is telling us the fear... Now listen, I'm, I'm, I'm going to quote it right out of the Bible. The fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. Oh, so those that do not have the fear of the Lord are not going to live necessarily as long as those who do. Is that what the Bible says? Yeah, that's what it's saying. So here's another thing. Listen to this one. It says in Proverbs chapter 14, verse number 26. Now don't miss it. Proverbs 14, verse number 26. Here's what it says. It says, in the fear of the Lord is strong confidence, and his children shall have a place of refuge. Oh, so the fear of the Lord is with confidence. So that means everything I do in life, I can have the confidence that what I'm doing, God is pleased with. It's the confidence. And it affects my own children. It affects my own life. But it affects my family as well. It affects my friends. It affects my fellow church members. And they can see the confidence that I have in the Lord and in His Word because the fear of the Lord produces confidence in our own lives, but in the lives of others. And the fear of the Lord is a choice. You can choose to prolong your days. You can choose to have the confidence of God in your life. And you can choose to, have, have, uh, to, to give others confidence in what the real Christian life is all about. Here's another reward. Listen to this one. Proverbs 28, 14. Happy is the man that feareth always, but he that hardeneth his heart shall fall into mischief. What? Happy is the man that feareth? Happy? Everybody in this world is looking for happiness. So what does fear produce? It fears holiness, and holiness produces happiness, and happiness is what we're all after. This is all what we're looking for. And God says, if you'll choose the fear of the Lord, I will give you holiness, and my holiness will give you happiness, and you have achieved in your life what you've been looking for, that money can't buy, that materials can't give you happiness, things cannot give you happiness, materialism cannot give you happiness, a new car, a new house, new clothes, everything, money, that's not going to produce happiness, but if you have the fear of the Lord, the Bible says, he that feareth, happiness is the man that feareth. It's in your Bible. Hey, that's in your Bible. Are you listening? That's in your Bible. Do you believe the Bible? No, come on now. Honestly, do you believe the Bible? If you believe it in God's name, practice it and experience the happiness that you've been looking for. And that's to fear the Lord that produces happiness. Let me give you another one. Listen to this one. It's awesome. In Proverbs chapter 19, verse number 23, it says, The fear of the Lord tendeth to life. And he, watch it now, and he that hath the fear of the Lord, it shall abide satisfied. He shall not be visited with evil. Now listen to me. Do you really believe the Word of God is true and God meant what He said? 
So if you will have the fear of God, the reverence of God, the respect of God, the due reward of God, if you have that, does that mean then that you can have satisfaction? Yes. Does that mean that you can have happiness? Yes. Does that mean that you can have confidence? Yes. Does that mean that you can have a prolonged life? Yes. Either that or let's call God a liar. God didn't mean what he said. Let's close our Bible, throw it in a trash can, and let's all go out and get drunk. But if we do believe the Bible, in God's name, choose the fear of the Lord so that you can have these things. The satisfaction, the fear of the Lord tendeth to life, and he that hath it shall abide satisfied. Satisf your, your life will be satisfied, and not only be happy, but you'll be satisfied with the life that you have. You'll be satisfied with your house, with your apartment, with the material things, with your furniture, with your husband, with your wife, with your children, with your church, with your pastor. You will have satisfaction if you have the fear of the Lord. That's not Dean Miller's statement. That's in God's Word. Look, folks, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to get you on the, on the course of God's blessing by you choosing to fear the Lord, reverence Him, respect Him, believe Him, give Him His due rewards, and you will have all of these things. You will have a prolonged life. You will have confidence. You will have happiness. You will have satisfaction. And then God adds to that, and you shall not be visited with evil. <laughs> wow. Oh, my soul. How much better can it get? And it's just a simple thing to do. Choose the fear of the Lord. Choose to reverence Him. Choose to respect Him. Choose to honor Him. Choose to love Him. Choose to obey Him. Obey Him. You won't have any of these things unless you obey what God has said and what He's written. And the first thing he says to you in the very first part of the book of Proverbs is, is fear him. Fear the Lord. That's the beginning of all these other things. Here's something else. Listen to this. I hope you're enjoying this as much as I am giving it to you. But here's something else. I'm going to read out of Proverbs 31.30. It says, Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. So what, is, what does fear produce? Praise. Praise. First of all, we praise God, and then because we're the kind of a Christian we are, others will praise God for knowing us who are producing praise in their lives. It produces praise. God, I'm going to bring a whole message on, on this YouTube channel here one of these days on just this matter of praise. But uh, let me just simply say to you, it's a wonderful thing to praise God, but praise only comes when we fear God. Oh, yeah. Now, we can put on an act. We can pretend, and we can look like we are, but what's down on the depth of your heart? Is there really praise? Because if you fear the Lord, you'll have praise in your heart, and it'll be expressed by your lifestyle. Let me give you one more. Now, you're really going to like this one. Are you ready for this? I studied the Word of God. I came up with these truths, and I want you to get them. Now, listen to this. Here's Proverbs 22, verse number 4. Are you ready? Here it is. Proverbs 22, verse number 4, simply says, By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Holy smokes. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my, my, my. If I will choose the fear of the Lord, I could have riches honor, and a life enjoyed to live. That's what the Bible says. 
Listen to it again. By humility and the fear of the Lord. That's a choice, the fear of the Lord. Are, presently, right now, are riches, honor, and life. You can find that in Proverbs 22, verse number 4, right out of God's Word. So what have I said so far? I have said, number one, I have defined to you what fear is. Fear is the beginning of knowledge. Fear is the uh, hatred of evil. Fear is the beginning of wisdom. Fear is to walk uprightly. Fear is to have uh, the instruction of wisdom, to give instruction to others. Then it's rewarded by a prolonged life. It's rewarded by confidence. It's rewarded by happiness. It's rewarded by satisfaction. It's rewarded by praise. And it's rewarded with riches. Bless your little pea-picking heart. You can choose all of this by choosing the fear of the Lord. Honestly, it's there. Now, let me just say this. It's commanded. Here we go, and I'm done. Listen. Proverbs 3, 7 says, Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. That's a command. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Don't think you can get by with it. Don't think that you can get away with it. Don't think that you can just do anything you want to do. No, it's a command. Fear the Lord. Be wise in thine own eyes and depart from evil. Here's another command. Let not thine heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all day long. That's in Proverbs 23, verse 17, in case you want to look it up. Proverbs 23, 17 simply says, Let not thine heart envy sinners. Don't, don't wish to be like the world. Don't envy them. But be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. That's in your Bible. And then let me close by this one. Proverbs 24, 21. My son, fear thou the Lord and the king, and meddle not with them that are given to change. So what's he saying here? He's saying, be careful who you meddle with. The fear of the Lord is to meddle with the right kinds of people, and those ought to be your pastor, those ought to be your uh, members of the church, that ought to be those that are walking uprightly, that ought to be those that are soul winners, those that are Bible believers, that are those that are living moral lives, those that are happy, those that fear God. That's the ones you want to meddle with. Make your company with. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. I'm through and I'm going to close and I'm sure you're saying amen to that. But listen, we have got to come back to the place where we once again practice that book. That book has the answer, and because America has departed from the, the principles of that book, look where we are. And if you as a person depart from the principles of that book, even about not choosing the fear of God, you're going to get all the opposite of what the fear of God will bring. He even said, evil will visit you. You will be uncomfortable. You will be unhappy. You will have the loss of the presence of and the soothing comfort of the Holy Spirit of God. Choose you the fear of the Lord. Oh, I wish, that, I wish that God would let me reach out through that screen and grab you by the lapels and shake you and say, there is no other way to live except what I just preached to you from this book called God's Word. And God wrote what He meant, and He meant what He wrote. And you can have it if you'll believe it and do it. Thank you for tuning in. God bless you.